Hey, Yorktown family. I just wanted to update you on what is going on at and through Yorktown uh, these last couple of weeks. Uh, your staff is still at work, uh, not only preparing and producing these online experiences, but we're meeting weekly. Uh, our regular schedule is that we meet every Monday at 1.30. And so we're doing that via Zoom right now because of the stay-at-home order and the social dis distancing directives. And we're meeting together to pray for you and to discuss how we can continue to shepherd uh, the flock that God has entrusted to us. Our staff is also keeping in contact with their respective areas of ministry, whether it be the student ministry, the children's ministry, adults, also uh, maintaining uh, these facilities on our campus during the season. And we're also praying about what things look like for Yorktown after this season. When we are free again to worship together corporately, to have Bible studies and fellowships. Uh, so it's, it's a very difficult and frustrating thing not knowing a solid date when all that can happen. So here's what we're asking of you. Would you pray for us as your staff and your elders to give uh, that God would give us wisdom and unity and clarity and courage moving forward and so that we can embrace this next season with gusto and fervor and with the favor of God. As I've been praying for you and processing what God may be trying to do uh, in us, through us, and after this uh, coronavirus pandemic, the word redeem keeps coming to mind. Now, I know I've used that word repeatedly in some of our online correspondence and, and videos, but how can we best redeem, utilize this time for our good and for God's glory and not let it be waste, wasted on this season or lost on this season, not, not to waste the time? The Apostle Paul wrote the following in Ephesians 5, 15 through 17, right after he commands us as followers of Christ to walk in light as opposed to walking in darkness. He says, pay careful attention then to how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So don't be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And the word time, therefore, as in redeeming the time, is, is not the word that we might think of when we think of, of uh, seconds on a clock or the, the, the word time from which we get our word chronology. That, that word time there is not C-H-R-O-N-O-S. Uh, rather, it's the word kairos, K-A-I-R-O-S, which means opportunity or that which time gives an opportunity to do. That is so cool, isn't it? And I think it's so rich, given where we are right now. Perhaps you don't see this season as much of an opportunity, but I do. I think it's an opportunity to take inventory of where we are in three primary areas of our lives to which I'm going to speak over the next few sessions in these short videos. Faith, our faith, family, and finances. I believe those things are probably on the majority of people's minds, don't you? The Apostle Paul writes in the verse that follows where he says to redeem the time with these words, so don't be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Uh, I mean, don't you want to know what the will of the Lord is when it comes to your faith and your family and your finances? Don't you want to honor God uh, with each of those areas? Let me read that those three verses from a more contemporary uh, version. It's again, it's Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. This is from the J.B. Phillips translation. He says, live life then with the due sense of responsibility, not as men who do not know the meaning and purpose of life as those who do, but as those who do. Make the best use of your time despite all the difficulties of these days. Don't be vague, but firmly grasp what you know to be the will of God. Let's, let's firmly grasp what we know to be the will of God in these difficult days. Uh, we, we want you not to hesitate, by the way, to call the church or to email us to let us know how we can specifically pray for you. You can find all of our contact information on our website, www.yorktown.cc. And you can either call the church office, you can email the staff members, but please let us know how we can pray for you and walk with you, uh, shepherd you through the season. This Sunday morning, we're going to resume our study through the book of Daniel, uh, which is the series called Convictions on Trial. And you don't want to miss this Sunday. 
Uh, the questions we're going to be asking is, is God about to bring judgment to America like he's done with other empires and nations throughout the course of history? Is God about to bring it into America as we know it? Uh, again, as he did to the mighty empire of Babylon, at which we're going to look a Sunday morning. An empire that, that he raised up, that he favored, uh, that he empowered, that he used for his purposes and for his glory. Is there a way to thwart the judgment of God if we repent of our sin? Again, those are some of the things at which we're going to look this Sunday. And I'll be preaching from the fifth chapter of Daniel. Uh, you can go ahead and read ahead if you'd like to, but we're going to see where God brought an end to that empire of Babylon because they were playing marbles with diamonds. So we hope to see you Sunday morning. But until then, let me pray over you the prayer that the Apostle Paul prayed for the church at Rome when he wrote a letter to them. Here's what he said. I pray, here's what he prayed. I pray, this is what I'm praying for you. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. So Yorktown, we, we love you. We miss you. We long again for those times where we get to meet together face to face. But until then, may God protect you and may God provide for you in ways that you would have never imagined as we continue to trust in him so that your faith in him might grow. So God bless you, Yorktown. We'll see you Sunday morning.